Hello guys, welcome to Surveying Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your surveying problems. So today we are going to talk about how to label your distance and bearing. You know, um, on one of our last videos, we tried to tell you how you are going to um, input points on AutoCAD. And then we used it to plot a four-sided figure, let's say the parcel of land. Now today we are going to see how we are going to do it label the distance and bearing on that parcel of land automatically using this software so we are not using the 2007 version but we are using a um, civil 3d 2018 version for this particular um, exercise so now and um, the first thing is that you still have to save your point which we have done the last time we have saved it and then the command is there p line and then the coordinates are there as well so the next thing now we are going to do is for us to do what is for us to run the script. So it's either you type script on your from your keypad and then you enter it or you use it from the toolbox that um, will be given the toolbox that is um, displayed here. So um, we come to yeah I think manage yeah so we come to manage and then from manage we see what we see run script. We see run script school so we just click on it then it will take us to where the script file is um, maybe if you have done it before you can automatically get there but if not done if not done it before you'll have to just navigate to the point where it is on your computer so this is the point you saved from our last video what we are going to do just click on it and do what we open it remember we did not pick the polyline because we have actually saved the polyline command on our script file so if you have um, if you have any challenge with that you can always go back to the first video all right thank you very much so we just what we open it so by the time we open it the shape is already getting formed so we just tap the um, the space bar twice by the time we do that we find out that our shape is what our shape is closed so this was what we got the last time yeah four-sided figure so today what we want to do is um, we want to label this um, four-sided figure like the distance and the bearing we want to give them the distance and bearing so um the next thing we are going to do is we are going to come to what to annotate yeah we are going to come to annotate and then from annotate we are going to look at what add labels we are going to look at what add labels so you click on add labels there are different labels or let's say different things you are going to do like different ways you are going to add label we are going to look at the line and curve segment so we come to line and curve then we are going to look at what under the line and curve segment we are going to look at what add line and curve labels you know by the time we click on this other functions can still come up but what we are concerned it with is what is the line and curve so in this particular case we are looking at what we now come to this point and we look at what um, from the um, subbeddings or whatever you call it we look at what we want to do. what we need is a um, bearing of a distance or distance of a bearing as the case may be because what we want to do is what we want to get the distance and bearing of these lines so these are other things you can do with the labeling under the fissure um, line and curve you know the label type and then the line label style so these are all the different styles you can get under this particular fissure of what under this particular feature of line and curve under what add labels are we together so we just come to um bearing over distance by the time we click on it we are not concerned with them um, curves so we won't bother ourselves with that part of the um that part of the segment so we just say add are we together by the time you define the style line label style you now come to click on what you click on add by the time you click on add, it will now say select what point on entity. So any point you select now, this is a poly, this is a polygon. It's not like we have exploded it. It's a polygon, so they are together. Now, if it was maybe like we have exploded it and then each of the four lines are separate, the way it will appear will be different. It might just be giving you for each of the lines. So, in this case, it has given us for that first line. We can still click on this other line. It has given us for the other line as well. For this other line, 
and then for the fourth line. However, um, there is this under this label type, we can still decide to use um, multiple segments. And with the multiple segments, we can actually have all the labels at once, if I'm not making a mistake. So um, maybe you can just try that on your own. I think we use a single segment. That's why on the poly on the polygon, it still has to be giving us the what you call the label one after the other. So I won't say that. Let's move forward. So we now come to see that um, we've gotten our what we've gotten the labels we need. So to leave that, we just say um, we escape. Just press the escape. So that um, function or that command we just go off. Now the next thing we just look at the labels we have there. The distances are there, the bearings are also there. But you know normally when we want to, um, how would I put it, when we want to label a, a parcel of land or maybe a plan or whatever the case is, um, this is not how it appears. No. We use the old circle bearing most of the time and then the bearing comes at top of the distance, not like the distance is at top of the bearing. So the first thing we want to do is that we want to make sure that the what we get what we want the way we want it. So the next thing is we flip the label. So by the time we flip it, you find out that what your bearing has come at top outside, whereas your distance is what your distance is inside. So the command you are going to use for that is what you right click on the label. By the time you right click on the label, you click rather, then you now right click. By the time you right click, you come to what? You come to flip label. So that will take you to that point. So if you now look at this now, they are giving us the bearing in form of quadrant instead of O circle bearing. So we are going to change this. We are going to do what? We are going to change this. So how do we do that? We come to this um, small toggle here. So we click on it. We see more options. I tell you, click on it to see more options on the dialog box. Now, these are the other options we need. So we now decide what we want to do with um, what we have. So there are different components here. The component name, the component names, um, the component names. You have your distance, your bearing, and your tag and your table tag. What we want to modify now is our bearing. So we just leave it as it is. So we just leave it on the bearing. Now the next thing we need is we want to change this. Um, quadrantal bearing to whole circle bearing because most of the time that's how the survey plans or maybe that's how we understand our bearings. So what we do now is we come to under text, we come to general segment, these three dotted lines, um, these three dots rather, we click on it. So by the time we click on it, we get to this what we get to this dialog box. So this is just like, um, would I say, a script or a command on how the distance, the bearing rather, appears on the on the software. So we just what we click on it to what to highlight, to highlight everything. So by the time we want to make any modification, it will now affect how the what do you call it, how it appears on the software, like the bearing appears on the software. So we come to this point. What we are looking for is um, the measurement type. So we come to the measurement type, we click on it, and we change the bearings towards to not azimuth. We change the bearings towards to not azimuth. So we click on not azimuth. Then the precision, we just need it to one second, not 0 0.01 second. It's not really kind of geodetic um, assignment or something. So we just need it to what to one second. So we now have degree minute and second, not degree minute second or second second. You get it. So we leave it like that. So we now do what we effect the the changes by clicking on this um, arrow to the right. We effect the changes by clicking on this arrow to the right. So the changes have been what has been effected. So we just do what and I think that's the most important thing we need to do when we want to change the bearing from that quadrantal system or that quadrantal format to full circle bearing. So we come to OK. You can see that. What we add as south, something, something is now what? 143 degrees, 18 minutes, and 00, zero seconds. And I believe this is how, or let's say, it's easier to reach the bearing like this 
compared to how it was you know you have to know the the quadrants what you add to maybe 180 or starting from you know can be can be quite difficult if you don't really understand how to go about your quadrant so you now see that it has been what it has appeared in what it has been changed and it's now appearing as a whole circle bearing so this is a way you can label your what your your lines you can label your lines you get your distance and your bearing automatically and then when you have it in that and uh, what do you call it on the quadrantal maybe format you can change it towards to the old circle so you do what you apply and then the next thing is um, you click on ok click on ok so you find out that what this particular line has changed the bearing for this particular line has what it has changed and automatically what for the others it has also was changed so remember that we were saying from the beginning that our uh, what our bearing is supposed to be outside our bearing is supposed to be outside whereas the distance what the distance would be inside so what do we do you click on the word you click on the label that's the first thing you are going to do you click on the label then you do what you right click you now flip flip so by the time you flip your distance is inside your bearing is what your bearing is outside so i think that's how you go about it maybe you select multiple you apply to all of them and then you can always go around it and then you get it so basically what we're able to do today is that we, we are able to share how we are going to do it, how you are going to label your lines yes how you are going to label your lines with their distance and bearing automatically you know you can actually start maybe um, listing them you know normally you just list them click on the particular line you list it and then you copy out the distance and bearing and then label it so yeah um, thanks for coming to class i know that you might have learned a thing or two and um, i'm really glad that um, you came to class today so um if you have any question maybe contribution you can always use the comment section or maybe you get back to us maybe via mail or other um, social media and those you can see on our what is called on our profile so if you are a new viewer thanks for coming and then make sure you subscribe to the channel and then if you've always been a um, viewer thanks for always checking out us and i know that they uh, won't let you down so for the new viewers for the returning viewers we say a very big thank you to you always check on us make sure that you share this link with your friends your colleagues anybody that them um, would need it and then we are going to see you on the next video until then make sure you stay safe and then you keep being a good and dramatic engineer see you on the next video bye